It's the Get Published Radio Show. And here's your host, Gerald Everett Jones, the guy who has the answers because, well, he's made all the mistakes himself. On today's show, our topic is writers, groups, and coaches. Really, anybody who can help you get unstuck. That's true. So many writers are painfully shy introverts. I don't know. I don't, when I get on a rant, I don't need to get unstuck. I need maybe somebody to help me change the subject. <laughs> Actually, we're going to hear from a writing coach first before we talk about meetups and panel discussions. And joining us on the phone is Tony Lapopolo an experienced book editor and agent who is leading seminars and coaching these days. Welcome to Get Published, Tony. Oh, thank you. Glad to be here. So, Tony, I've heard you talk to writers about doing their homework. What books or courses do you recommend that they study before they get to you? Okay, I have a very strict rule about that, that you can't even speak to me until you own these two books. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Yeah, the the first one is Stein on Writing by Saul, S-O-L, Stein, the best book, The Best Teacher, I studied under him. The second one is called Self-Editing for Fiction Writers by Rennie Brown, that's Brown with an E, and Dave King, all available on Amazon or bookstores. Okay. In these books, they tell you how to tell a story, and that's the most important thing. So it's not just for fiction. Everyone's writing memoir, and the memoir has to have a story. We're, we humans are wired story, and people just like to narrate. So I'm going to um, ask you to comment on that, too. I don't want to talk too long. Well, we actually had a um, an episode on memoir, and we were talking about how very often a writer will begin thinking that they're going to write a memoir, but actually, as they get into it, it turns out that it would be a whole lot better if they fictionalized it and found the, let's say, the story emphasis, because, you know, sometimes truth is it's either stranger than fiction or it lies there flat. Right. Well, memoir is not autobiography. It usually has a theme, like... We're Working with a woman now whose daughter, 17-year-old daughter, had to lose a leg to cancer and how the family went through that. So you know who the audience and readership would be for that book. And there's open writing, it's called Sleeping with Dogs, that she could never find the right man, but she found her life with dogs and became a dog trainer, makes her living with commercials with her dogs, and, you know, sort of settled out that she's not going to meet Mr. Right. You know, you know that women will write, certain women will, and dog people will will buy that book. I live with one, I know. You have to have a theme, you know, a frame and focus in your memoir. She has a man and a dog. Most people want to narrate. They want to narrate. And you've got to write scenes, and scenes have dialogue and action. Is having a writing... This is Tom, by the way. I was wondering if having a writing... How you doing? I was wondering if having a writing coach is about asking for discipline, for example, like you have to check in. It's a lot about discipline, but it's also about mastering a set of skills. You see, people think because they learn to write in third grade, they can sit down and write. It's like if you can jitterbug, could you then get on the stage with Berenshikov and and ballet? You've got to train. You You have to learn certain skills. There are certain skills you must master to write a book that the publishers in New York Publishing, where I come from, will buy and will give you an advance. I don't want to go into self-publishing, but that's kind of messing things up for discipline and for not telling your story, but showing your story. You've heard that before, right? And you show through scenes. And I think a big part of that is definitely finding your voice as a writer. Are there any kind of tips and tricks you've found to get people to really focus in? First, we don't listen to the voice of the writer (laughs) anymore. (laughs) One first century of fiction and nonfiction, we listen to the voices of the characters. So the the writer has to become an actor. I'll give you a, a wonderful author I like, James Lee Burke, who writes about Louisiana and Texas, and I don't know, he's on his 24th book by now. And he's a poet also. He's just beautiful. But he honed his skills. And in those two books, I said they will name the skills, so at least you know what the skills are, like point of view, choosing first person or third person. We don't do omniscient anymore. You can't do it. It's a lazy way. You don't challenge your way. I won't even accept it as an agent. So I want, you want to hear the character. But if you don't know your character well enough, you won't have a voice. So I know there's something called, and I know this is uh, finding my voice. I don't believe in that. You find it in your character. And if you don't, you have to write a character. 
almost a biography for your characters, the main ones who are on stage most of the time. And that's one of the first things we do in the writer's, writer's group with, you know, an instructor like me. So would you say um, that the approaches are, for fiction and ahead. nonfiction are, are similar in that way? Yeah, today they are because of, we call it narrative nonfiction, and that means it's a story, it's a movie, it's a novel, but it has to read like a novel even though it happened true. You go for the drama. Now, the granddaddy of all narrative nonfiction is In Cold Blood, which Truman oh, yeah. Capote wrote. That reads like a movie. There are characters, those characters are alive. It destroyed him, of course, because he couldn't finish his book till they, you know, executed those two boys. He'd fallen in love with one of them, and it took him five years to finish that book, and he could never write again after that. So we aren't that all that delicate, let's say. You've got to have tough skin to be a writer and to be in a group. You can't be a wuss or a baby. You want to hide under the bed. Well, what would you say it's, is the most common mistake that writers might make? They tell the story. They narrate it. I woke, oh, and they all start up with the, with the alarm clock going off. You know, <laughs> I'm waking up in the morning. With a bad dream. And just, they just narrate. They just tell the story without a scene, without dialogue, with all of the characters. You know, my name is James Bond. That's the main thing is that they just, they just write. They don't write a scene. They just tell it. And it's like as if you went to a movie, and instead of a movie or a play, there's a guy sitting up in a chair on the, on the stage telling you the story are reading it to you. And today, the thing about today is we don't have a distant attention span. It's 21st century uh, fiction and nonfiction. We don't have attention spans. Look how distracted we are, you know, by everything. You know, well, the blue tooth, Tony, we're uh, coming to the end of our segment. How can our readers get in touch with you? They have to learn to spell La Popolo, which <laughs> means the people in Italian. So it's L-O-P-O-P-O-L-O literary.com. La Excellent. LaPopoloLiterary.com is my website, and there's my phone number and everything there. Well, thank you for being so generous with your time, and we appreciate all that you've imparted to us this morning. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Okay, bye-bye. Get Published Radio will be right back after this message. You know, Get Published is all about helping you. Yeah, I mean you get published. And these days, the way to go is self-publishing where there are no agents or editors or big publishing houses telling you you can't or making you feel like you're not good enough. You know, going back in history, many famous authors were self-publishers. With his own printing press, Benjamin Franklin published Poor Richard's Almanac in 1732, long before he was a famous statesman. That's how we know Ben's sayings, such as, fish and visitors smell in three days. Seriously, if you want to change your life or change the world or both, it's a great time to get in the game. Ebooks are particularly easy. With a click, you can reach a worldwide audience. Did you know that there are more people in China who read English than those of us who use the language in all the rest of the world? So if you've got a story to tell, write that memoir or that novel that's been percolating in your head. And if you're an established professional, or if you have a job you dislike or no job at all, give us that business or technical or even political book that establishes you as an expert who deserves serious attention. Yes, it's easy to get published, but understand you'll need help if you want professional results. Editors and copy editors help you clean up your prose. Book designers make the product eye-catching. And publicists help you be heard above all that social media noise. We have those support resources on our website, getpublishedradio.com. And there we've also got a request for services form where you can get personal attention for whatever might be keeping you from getting it done. That's why we say getpublishedradio.com is your doorway to unlimited self-expression. Hey, it's all about the First Amendment. Use it or lose it. Welcome back as Gerald, Cheyenne, and Tom. Welcome Flo Selfman, past president of the Independent Writers of Southern California. Welcome to Get Published Radio, Flo. Happy to be here. So Flo, the Independent Writers of Southern California, or IWASC, what is their mission? IWASC's mission, and it's been uh, pretty much the same since it was founded in 1982, is really to be a service and support organization for professional writers in Southern California. And we do that mainly through networking and education. 
We welcome all writers, whether they're fiction, nonfiction, poetry, essays on scraps of paper, and whether they're t- published or not, or just transitioning. Well, I should have saved those scraps. It, <laughs> some, people, <laughs> some people turn really good books out of scraps. I wonder if participating in a writing group like IWASC functions as a kind of a substitute for engaging a writing coach, especially if you're on a limited budget, cough, cough. (laughs) Well, you can participate in IWASC with a very limited budget, especially if you become a member. All of our Monday night panels are absolutely free. They're actually two different things because IWASC primarily through our education programs. We have panel discussions once a month on a Monday evening. We have Saturday morning seminars once a month, and we have other groups that we call satellites, and they're not writing groups per se. So a writing coach, it would be really something different. You might find a writing coach through IWASC, but or other kinds of writing groups. But we, we, that's not our purpose. It's really we want to pe- people to succeed at the business of writing. So we really want to teach them all about writing, publishing. But the organization has changed really over the years because when when Gerald and I first became members of IWASC, most of of the members were journalists. They were freelance journalists, and I'm basically a publicist by profession, and so that was the reason I got involved in the first place. But as the years have gone on, most of our members now are authors of all sorts. So a lot of our programs really have to do with focusing on authors and publishing. And we should emphasize Southern California, it is based in Los Angeles, but there is a a further reach. I mean, the metro area has kind of expanded, hasn't it? We are in three counties now because we have groups that meet once a month called sat- we call them satellites, and they range now from Thousand Oaks uh, in Ventura County to Woodland Hills, Altadena. Uh, we have a South Bay group in El Segundo, and we have a terrific group in Orange County that meets in Tustin. And so these groups are, they're drop-in groups. Uh, one does not have to be an IWASC member to participate. You don't have to go every time. You can go whenever you want. But it's really really interesting because each group has a different leader and each group kind of of, uh, formats itself the way the members want to do it. So some have speakers every month or every other month. Sometimes uh, they do critiques of members' writing. If they want to read the writing, then other people have comments about it. And sometimes there's a spinoff group that actually is a writing group. So they And then they also talk about the business of writing. So it's whatever each group wants to well, do. And there's also the online forum as a resource, right? You don't even have to be in Los Angeles for that. Absolutely. We, well, we have, a, we have a Yahoo group and you don't have to be a member. Again, we Really, I think it's part of part of our outreach that we we want to include as many people as possible. So we have a Yahoo group, a discussion board, and you don't have to be an IWASC member, but you, you can go on our website iwosc.org, and uh, if you scroll down, on, you'll find that uh, a Yahoo discussion board. And of course, we have a Facebook page, and that's become active as well. And writers will post information about new books or book signings or grammar things, which is a, a special love of mine. <laughs> uh, sometimes some lively. Discussions discussions ensue, but it's really all in a very friendly spirit of networking and cooperation. And if I could say one more thing about the Yahoo group, I have yet to post a question or to see anyone else post a question on that group that doesn't get two or three Excellent, excellent answers. Excellent, very definitive, <laughs> informative answers. It's just, it's just an incredibly wonderful resource. Well, sometimes I've said to people that might be interested in joining, I say, well, why don't you drop by the Yahoo group and ask the same kinds of questions that you might ask if you were networking after a meeting, and you're going to get quality answers. Maybe you'll also be intrigued by the idea that you, if you come to the meeting, you can put faces to those answers, you know. Yeah, there is a networking aspect to it, isn't there? There is. Well, you know, when people get there, if they get there a little bit early, they have a chance to talk to each other. And, you know, we're very inclusive. And at the after the meeting, we do have networking time after every meeting. So people do, you know, not only meet the speakers, but the, they get to meet each other. And if I could add one other activity we have that's wonderful, we call it IWASC Reads Its Own. We do it twice a year, roughly in January and, and July. And we have about 12 to 14 IWASC members who read uh, up to seven-minute excerpts of their work, whether it's published or not published in any genre. And I love to say that no matter how well you know somebody, 
you get to know them a lot better when you hear them read their own words. It's, it's a very exciting afternoon that we do twice a year. Between the meetings and the Yahoo groups, is there a question that you see pops up a lot, like the most common thing people are looking for help with? You know, one of the questions always is, should I find an agent or should I self-publish? So oh, yeah. we do a lot of emphasis on both of those things. For me, as a, they don't ask as much about grammar and punctuation, but editing. editing they debate it. And self- they debate it on Facebook. <laughs> 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 so, but, uh, but anyway, we do talk a lot about editing and self-editing and how to work with an editor. Oh, and I think finding an editor, there are so many well-practiced and professional editors who are IWASC members. If you needed a coach or developmental editor, you don't have to look very far, but also you're going to be able to find somebody within the membership who's actually worked with them, I think. So... You know, you don't have to be going cold to, you know, looking in the phone book for somebody to help you. Yeah, well, we, and we have, I mean, the thing that's wonderful about IWASC is that not only do we have the best programs, I have to say, all the, everybody's writing organizations programs are wonderful, but ours are especially wonderful. What can I say? <laughs> and we have, a, we have a program committee this year, so we have five or six people. And the meeting place is Culver City, downtown Culver City, across from Sony, for the Monday yeah. meetings and the seminars usually, right? Yeah, that's been our base for a long time. So the website's got that. So how can our listeners get in touch with you, Flo, as uh, you're also a developmental editor and publicist, and also with, well, you, you mentioned the website, but maybe you want to repeat that. Okay, well, for IWASC, just go to our website, iwosc.org, and everything you need to know will be there. If you want more information from me, I'm Flo Selfman, and I am a publicist as well as a copy editor, a proofreader, and you can find me at wordsalamode.com wordsalamode.com. I want Keep chocolate sauce on all my words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your words have the cherry on top. So <laughs> oh, oh, Flo. Flattery will get you everywhere. Thank you for being so generous with your time this morning. Flo. My pleasure. Get Published Radio will be right back after this message. You know, in all the history of the world, with today's technology, it's never been easier to get published, to self-publish your printed book, ebook, audiobook, even multimedia ebook, and not just novels and memoirs or how-to books and histories. Although, if that's what you've got, let's have it. But also poetry, spoken word, graphic novel, cartoons, children's picture book, interactive video games, virtual reality, and imaginative mashups of all this stuff. Get into the game. Along the way, you'll no doubt need some professional help from an editor, a book designer, a publicist. But isn't the investment in yourself worth it? How about you take the money you'd spend on your next vacation and get famous instead? GetPublishedRadio.com. That's our support website where we've got links to all the resources you'll need. And don't forget that request for services form if you crave some personal attention. That's GetPublishedRadio.com. Hey, it's all about the First Amendment. You can use it or lose it. You know, Runkey Productions, the audio magicians, can take your radio shows, podcasts, audiobooks, and ads from the streets of New York to the outer reaches of the galaxy. I think we need more echo at the end of that. Now, look, visit us at runkeeproductions.com. I still think we need more cowbell. Welcome back to Get Published, where it's, well, all about getting published. Well, our topic today has been writers, group, and coaches. And we heard from Tony Lapopolo, who was a writing coach. And we heard from Flo Selfman, who uh, is past president of a writing organization, which she says is not a writer's group, but of course, it kind of subsumes a lot of writer's groups. So the question on my mind is, when does a writer need a writing coach? A writer needs a writing coach, I would say, every minute of the day. (laughs) But it is not practical, obviously. My first writing coach I had was an English teacher in college, but mainly when I got interest in one of my books, my first book, the editor of the book was the writing coach. This is what it has to be this long. It's too long. This is not good. And try to fix this. Well, and yeah, under a traditional publishing model, and you've got that uh, developmental those were, those editor. Those were the days. That 
that's going to be, that editor is going to be as much a taskmaster. They're going to be at, saying, well, you promised me that chapter by today. How come yeah. I don't have it? Yeah. Yes. And that would be, you know, the kind of thing you're going to necessarily maybe pay somebody to, I think about business coaches that, oh, did you write the business plan? Why didn't you write the business plan? Or you left the marketing on the business plan or you left the financing on the business that kind of thing. I mean, Cheyenne, what would be your take on that? I mean, I guess the biggest question for me that comes to mind is what do you say to a writer who thinks that they don't need a writing coach? Do you think everyone needs a writing coach or are there exceptions to kind of, you know, the way Tom said, every minute of any, every day, a writer needs someone keeping them kind of on task? One of the questions you would ask that person is, why are you writing this? I'm telling you this is not right. Mm -hmm. And that person will say to you, I'm writing it for this reason. And you will say, do you want to get published or do you want to write for your own reason? And then you will go fly and they will start throwing crockery at each other. <laughs> I've been through this. Well, and that debate's healthy and, and there is no single answer. But I would say to that person, think back. It just occurred to me when Tom said it is that he actually is counting among his writing coaches one of his English teachers. Mm -hmm. And I remember yeah. my English teacher my freshman year of high school, he had been the chairman of the English department teaching seniors, and he was so upset by how bad the seniors were, <laughs> oh, yeah. he took it on himself to go back and teach freshman English. One of the things that was just genius about him was he would open class. There was a time there where I remember vividly he would sit and talk in detail about his favorite dish, chocolate souffle, served at the pump room downtown, and he would talk about it in great detail, how the crust was, how it had to be a certain way in the middle, and if the thing fell, yeah. you send it back. And I began to realize he's not just a cranky old guy. He's talking about expository writing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He will tell you, if he's doing his job, he will tell you, what part of your writing is good and what part is bad. That's one thing that's important because you, you But you usually know, he don't may find a way that. of saying it like, you know, I think your souffle might have fallen this time. Yeah. You know, he'll, he'll find a way of slipping that in that doesn't totally humiliate you. Yeah, and I think that's a great way to do it. When you say, you know, you said it's freshman in, in high school because uh, I think even at that age, a lot of kids have a hard time grasping the concept of writing isn't necessarily always this very structured, all right, boom, you have this part, then this part comes next, and this, like, just opening up their kind of wider, broadening their horizons in a way. Well, he had a long, that makes sense. he had a long rant on irony. We didn't know what the word was, and he didn't explain it in the beginning. All he did was he read a passage out of Huckleberry Finn, where Huckleberry goes into the library of the house he's staying, and he remarked it how uniformly the books were stacked on the shelves and how there was a nice thin coating of dust over all of them. And it became clear only on reflection that Mark Twain was trying to tell us that these people never read any of the books that were in their <laughs> library. Yeah. It's called context clues. That's how you figure out, you know, well, indeed, well, the, the good meaning of a but, word but, with a, but an as, explanation. But as teenagers, don't we kind of miss, we're certainly sarcastic with each other, oh, yeah. but we may miss but a I, lot of the signals that we're getting from other people. Well, the, the, the other people is the point of this writing. What a good coach will do is tell you, I'm not interested and reading what you think, you're writing for me. Why am I going to buy this book? Talk to me. Well, like I Tell said, I'm, the way I'm I arrogant can. and I'm Picasso and I'm painting for myself. And you think you're right all the time. Of course yeah. I do. That's why I'm an artist. And when somebody tells you this is a piece of dreck, then you will go off the handle okay. and attack it. Well, everybody's going to have to tune in next week to find out how to straighten themselves out because this is Get Published Radio. Yeah, and get out of your head. <laughs> and that's our show. You know, Get Published is all about self-publishing and self-expression. And that getting published and the ease of getting published these days is really all about exercising the First Amendment in this free society of ours. You know, what we need these days are more ideas. Even though we're deluged in, with information, we need more good ideas. And we need debate about those ideas. 
book length debate, not just snippets that are posted on social media, not just selfies and cute pictures of your pets, the things that you really think. And remember, because in self-publishing there are no gatekeepers out there, that is the good news and that is the bad news. So hire some good help. Perhaps you found that here. You may find it on the website, whatever you're looking for, whether it's an editor or a book designer or somebody to help you promote. But hire good help, get good advice, and by all means, please get published. The Get Published Radio Show with Gerald Everett Jones is produced by Runky Productions. Our producer is Lori Marple and your announcer is Bill Navarro. Music by Jason Shaw. You'll find links to support services on our website, getpublishedradio.com. So whether you're an author, a publisher, or a self-promoter, get help at getpublishedradio.com. And thanks for listening.